Hi everyone, in this lesson I'm going to work through this question from the 2020 QCAA General Maths sample paper number two. So it's the last of the problem solving questions. We've got here some seasonally adjusted rainfall data for 2015 and 2016. Uh, so these are adjusted figures, these ones. Now we've got the seasonal indices already given to us. And here's the information that we need to get started on. In 2017, it's actual, not adjusted rainfall. We had 127, then 106, 75 mils, and then 107. We cannot compare these numbers directly with the ones in the table. These are actual rainfall, these are adjusted. We're going to need to do these adjustments for ourselves, at the first step. Now, what are we going to do? Well, in order to adjust, an actual we divide by the index. So I've got 127 divided by the index of 1.24. And remember to change to decimal. 102.4. Uh, now these are all to two decimals, I'll be the same. 102.42. So I'll need to make myself a little heading here and record 102.42 as the adjusted summer rain. Now I'll just pause the video while I do the remaining ones. Okay, so I've just completed those uh, adjusted figures for 2017. Remember the raw value divided by the index. 106 for autumn would divide by the index of 1.02. Now, we are supposed to analyse this data and predict the total rainfall for each season of 2025. Now, this represents a time series. If I were to uh, sketch a graph with time on the horizontal axis, and I'm going to count in seasons, so one, two, three, four, that would be the four seasons, summer, autumn, winter, spring, of 2015. Then continuing 5, 6, 7, 8, this would be the seasons of 2016. And I I'm, I'm need a numerical variable if I'm going to do a linear regression. I'll put rainfall up here in millimetres and I'll be using the seasonally adjusted figures. So I'll need to get my calculator going into stats mode. So I'll clear what I was doing there, hit the mode key, number two for stats, and A plus BX, a linear regression type model. So my, f my uh, data points here, I have three years worth of seasonal data, so uh, counting the seasons, I've got 12 seasons worth of data, and then for the Y variable, I'm going to enter these figures here, 96.77, 98.04, and again, I'll pause the video while I complete the data entry for you. Okay, so I've just completed the data entry. You can see the last two figures here from 2017 represent item number or season 11 and season 12. So once all that's entered, we can then go to the stat mode here, Remember we're doing a regression analysis, option 5, and we have available things like A, B and R. A has the value of 97.61. So let me just uh, take some notes here. Remember this regression analysis was of the form Y equals A plus B multiplied by X. Y was the rainfall. The number for A, which is what I just had a moment ago, 97.61. Now I'll need to go and find my value for B, the gradient. So again, we hit stat, and then we go 5 and 2 this time for B. That's 0.5993. And X 
was the the time, wasn't it? So I'll put T, T for time. Now again, the time was counting in seasons, not minutes or hours, but that's still a time variable. There's my formula that represents the linear regression. Now, I haven't plotted the graph. If I plotted the graph, it would start up here somewhere with an intercept of about a bit under 100, and it would tend to increase gradually because the gradient was this very small number, about 0.5. But I have no idea whether my data plot is as good as this, or perhaps the data points are really, really noisy. Perhaps there's lots of gaps between the best fit line and the data points. I really don't know unless I plot the entire thing. Well, there is one way to tell without plotting the graph, and I don't think I'd have time to plot the graph. So the one, the one way to tell is again go to number five for regression. It's the value of R, Pearson's correlation coefficient. So let's check. 0 0.936. So it's positive. That's good. It means the graph is going up. And it's pretty high. So that's a strong positive correlation. I'm, I'm even going to write that down on my little notes here. R equals 0.936. It's a strong positive correlation. That means I'm fairly confident to use this formula to make predictions. And what am I supposed to predict? I'm supposed to predict the total rainfall for each season in 2025. So I suppose what I've got to do then is I've got to extend this until I reach 2025. Now what numbers would I be up to in here by the time I reached 2025? Well, let's see, we're jumping up by four each time, aren't we? So from the beginning of 2015, I add four to get one year ahead. I'd add eight to get two years ahead, etc., etc. To get to this point, I've jumped 10 years ahead. 4 times 10 is 40. So this would be, if I was counting the months, this would be, oh, sorry, the seasons, this would be 41, 42, 43, and 44. They would be how many seasons had elapsed since the beginning of this chart. So I can use those numbers, 41 to 44, in this equation to predict the rainfall. So here we go. This will be 20, 25, and we're going summer, autumn, winter, spring. And here comes my here comes my calculator. Now, we can do this, uh, it's, we can be a little bit clever with this. We can go stats, reg, and then number one for A, plus stats, reg, then number two for B, times, and I'm just going to hit uh, 41. So that'll calculate as if I typed all of those things, but there's no rounding. I have 122.18. Let's write that one down. 122.18. I do this again, except I just have to hit repeat and change that to 42. 122.78 this time. And so on. I'll just pause one. So that is the calculations based on that formula. That formula came from that graph, and that graph, of course, came from back here, which was the seasonally adjusted. Now, uh, they said here predict the total rainfall. The word total is slightly ambiguous in my opinion, but I read total rainfall to mean actual rainfall. So if I'm going to calculate actual rainfall from a seasonally adjusted value, I will have to multiply by each of these indices to go back to the actual. So the first one there for summer, I'd multiply by 1.24. Where'd my calculator end up? There it is. So in summer, uh, 
thought, if I was clever, if I was clever, and I wasn't smart enough to think of this at the time, I could have done this. I could have put brackets around that calculation and then multiplied by, uh, now I've forgotten what the forgotten what the index was. It was 1.24, wasn't it? And then multiplied by 1.24. So that gives me 151.50. So down here I've got 151.50. And this is actual rainfall. Now I'll do the same process for the other four multiplying by the indices each time. Again, I'll just pause while I... So there you are. I've just uh, finished multiplying each of these predicted uh, rainfall amounts, which were the adjusted ones, by these four seasonal indices. And this gives me a prediction for the actual rainfall in each of the seasons in 2025. Uh, is this a good prediction? Well, that depends. Uh, we have a strong positive correlation, so that's a good sign, but we have extrapolated, we have gone a long, long way, 10 years into the future, based on only three years worth of data. So extrapolating too far is always a danger, because we can't be certain that the pattern we've observed in those three years is going to continue in the same way for the next 10. Okay then, thanks for watching.